Hello and welcome to the Schooner Simulation. I'm your host, Michael Whitman, bringing you all the technology with none of the know-how. For those that are new, we're watching the good old Crimson and Cream take on two lanes, seeing how it plays out, setting both teams to Heisman computer difficulty, and analyzing the gameplay footage. The updated rosters, courtesy of the Operation Sports Forum, haven't been updated for two lane, so we'll have OU's current roster going up against the Green Waves lineup from last year. The college football revamped modification is used to update visuals to make the game look better in general. Check out links to both in the description below. Good news, everyone! I stole the last of the Anchor money and I was able to upgrade the assets and my computer to run these simulations in HD. Let us know what you think about this new look in the comments. Since the match is supposed to have Tulane take the home side of the field, I've made a slight modification to make them feel more at home. For the matchup, I've put the Green Wave in their iconic blue home uniforms and the Sooners in their traditional white visitors jerseys. With the game being played in Norman, Oklahoma will have a tactical advantage at their natural point above sea level, and with that comes the atrocious weather. According to Dark Sky, it's looking like it'll be 90 degrees at kickoff, feeling like 100, and with a 61% humidity range. At least there'll be a 13 mile an hour wind. OU starts off on defense, and although they let a few runs get through, is responsible for an interception on the fifth play of the drive, courtesy of Jaden Davis. While this is a great start for the Sooners' secondary, their prowess on defense becomes visibly shaky as they hit the field. Although they are able to keep damage to a minimum and force the ball back to our side, they also have a hard time figuring out how to tackle in the open field, leading to plays that should have been stopped short, going for more yardage. Michael Pratt's eccentric decision-making is both good and bad, sometimes resulting in a loss of yardage or an easy pass block, others leading to a gain of 75 yards and two back-to-back -back plays, both to Jaquan Jackson. This doesn't deter the Sooners, as Isaiah Thomas goes on to get two sacks on the game with one forcing a turnover on fourth down, Azamoa and Turner Yell come up with four tackles for loss, and Oweibu getting critical stops on third and fourth downs. While it wasn't their finest hour, OU was able to hold Tulane to two field goals, 142 passing yards, and 68 rushing yards. The offensive side of the ball definitely looks a bit better. Rattler was slow to start and wouldn't look for the deep ball, but once he found his groove, simply wouldn't let up. Why would he when the O-line gave him plenty of time and ensured he had zero sacks recorded for the entire game? Rattler took the ball down the field three times himself for a total of 18 yards, went 18 and 21 passing for 195, and ended up with a QBR of 210.8. With Rattler gaining 10 overall stat points from the end of last season to this one, he is definitely going to be gunning for the Heisman. But the more surprising factor is who on the receiving side of the ball was making him look that good. While the pod predicted Marvin Mims to be a top weapon, he was held to only two receptions for 16 yards the whole game, although one pass that would have easily boosted those stats was underthrown and broken up by Jalen Monroe. Theo Weiss came out on top with a whopping seven receptions for 102 yards and two touchdowns, one of which went for 35 yards with a spectacular one-handed catch. Right behind the reception leader was Mike Woods II, getting three receptions for 36 yards and two jet sweeps for 17. Stogner follows close behind and continues to be Rattler's go-to when a completion for a first is critically necessary. The ground game was lacking, however. Kennedy Brooks was our top rusher coming in at 13 attempts for only 51 yards, and Gray was non-existent this game, only having one touch for four yards, further cementing Brooks' claim to be the primary running back. The Sooners win 24-6. The strange part about this simulation is that four out of the seven times I ran the game to test the new setup, OU actually lost to Tulane, and sometimes by double digits. The defense performed roughly the same, but the offense ended up being the problem with turnovers and bad decisions preventing any touchdowns from being scored. I think this is OU's game to lose. They have all the tools to show why they were accepted to the SEC, which of course includes beating up on non-Power 5 conference teams. And that's it for this week's episode. If you can't get enough of the Schooner blog, make sure to tune in to the Schooner pod to hear Bobby, Ty, and Jameson talk about this week's game, available wherever you listen to your normal podcasts.